The other day I met a dragonfly At least that's what I thought at the time Turns out it wasn't really a dragonfly at all And now he is a friend of mine Mysterious aviator No one's told if he can fly Mysterious aviator Hold him up And he'll try, try, try Mysterious Aviator is a product sold by Moyu Store. And I guess because I do lots of steampunk stuff, they thought I would probably want to make it and review it. Which I do. My daughter was also super keen to help me out, so she's going to join me too. She's pretty good with instructions. Put all these in all in those school spaces. On those schools. And then it says, put all those in there. Everything comes nicely packaged in reusable plastic boxes, and all the parts are organized extremely well with a piece of paper that shows you the corresponding part numbers. They also include a handy assortment of tools that will be needed for the build. Do you know what that is? No. A hex key. I don't know what that is. The majority of the pieces are made from either brass or wood. The wood I believe is walnut, and it's really really nice. Though I was a bit surprised to find that the brass pieces already had quite a few scratches on them. There's a nice wood base with a switch on it and a label so you don't forget that this is the Mysterious Aviator. The whole thing is powered by an electric motor attached to a bunch of gears. For the build, we started organizing our pieces oh yeah, by placing them on the handy organizing Thanks. sheet of paper. Good thing you're here. Perfect. Yep, we have the right number of them. Great, so we've got all of our wood parts. Then it was just a matter of bolting everything together. Be a little tricksy for you. Yeah. I think it might, because your fingers are so big. <laughs> <laughs> that is tricky. It can only reach to there. Okay, well maybe here, why don't I try with some tweezers? Have you ever used tweezers? I can try it too. Okay. Let's see how it goes. Do you know how to use tweezers? Yeah? Okay. Good job. 
The included tools worked pretty well, however I did need to use one of my own wrenches to tighten up the acorn nuts, cause there was no included wrench that fit that size. Sometimes you need uh, wrenches for making mysterious aviators. Sometimes you do. I also eventually switched over to my own screwdriver, cause it was just a bit better quality than the included one. I do want to also mention that the instructions were really, really good. I never felt confused about what I was supposed to do next. And that's a big deal, because I've made a lot of things with terrible instructions, and it really ruins the experience. They used ZH here. Yeah. We did find one or two typos, but nothing a five-year-old couldn't figure out. Another issue I ran into is the specified screws were slightly too long for the hexagonal spacer bars, which meant you couldn't screw them all the way in and have them snug up against the other piece. I got out a file and filed a little bit of the end of the screw away, and then it worked out. After that, things went pretty smoothly for a while, just me and my daughter happily making a mysterious aviator together. And then we ran into a little problem. A couple of the wing strut component things didn't line up with the holes in the brass. So see how this is is not lining up? Mm -hmm. So I think I'm going to try and bend it with some pliers. Okay. So here's some pliers. Bend it the right way. Bend it today. It took a fair bit of effort, but with the help of some encouraging singing, I was able to get it to line up. Oh yeah, we got her. In the hive! Now all that was left to do was assemble all the parts into something mysterious. Which would have been easy if it wasn't for this one little part, the only plastic part in the whole kit, and it needs a bit of work to make it work. Two of the holes were slightly too small for the bolts that were supposed to go through them, so I had to use pliers to get them all the way in. And once I got them through, there wasn't enough thread on the other side for the nuts to get a good secure hold on them. And lastly, the hole in the center was slightly too small for the metal rod it was supposed to sit on. No. Uh, what do I have to take apart? I have to get those wires out of there so that I can drill that out so it's going to actually fit. Why 3D printed part? I'm so close and it was going really well. It's This 3D printed part has caused me more problems than anything else. Mm. So I took it apart. And drilled it. And filed it. And then put it all back together. Well, those cords are sticking out the bottom. Good. On its stand. Yeah. Mysteriously. Then we plugged in some batteries and started it up. Now that looks pretty serene and amazing, but I bet you're probably wondering, what does it sound like? And it sounds a little bit like this. Oh yeah, and you can also plug it into a power bank which has a variable speed control, so you can do this. I'm not exactly sure why you'd want to, but you can. And that <laughs> is a mysterious aviator. So the mysterious aviator, what did I like about it? I really liked the instructions. That was like my favorite part because they were just really straightforward, really clear, really simple, easy to see what was supposed to happen. You don't often find instructions that are actually good, that make it a joy to make something versus a hair pulling, frustrating nightmare. Whoever created those instructions, you did a fantastic job, well done. Also all the parts were super well organized in their plastic trays with corresponding pictures and numbers so you never got mixed up, didn't use the wrong parts. Also, they included tons of spare parts, which isn't something that happens very often. And not just one spare part of each, but actually quite a few. Here's all the parts I had left over, and actually there were enough of the smaller screws that I could have used those on the long hex spacer things, and then I wouldn't have had to file the ones that were there. So if you're doing this, maybe you could do that. I also like the design overall. It's really well designed. There's a good uh, brass to wood ratio that looks really good just from a design perspective. Um, 
It obviously has that dragonfly feel without trying too hard to be a dragonfly. I think they really nailed the design. Me personally, I probably would have made this pole just a little bit shorter, but that's my own opinion. I probably still will make it a little bit shorter just for me. I do like that they included two different power options so you can plug it into just some AA batteries or you can use your own power bank. And then they have a switch which is a regulator which probably is like three to five volts or something. So you can adjust the speed of it. Not sure why you'd need to really adjust the speed but it's possible. Also you could plug this into a wall thing and have it plugged into the wall. So those are the things I liked about it. Now, things I didn't like as much, obviously there were the few hiccups in the build process, like these, the screws being too long for those spacers, the plastic thing in the bottom. And those are things that if I had known beforehand, I could have actually drilled out the plastic, used different screws for the spacers, and it wouldn't have been a big deal. And so now you know, so now it can be not that big of a deal for you. So my main kind of issue with this is it feels like they spent a ton of effort designing and crafting this and then at the end they're like oh and how should we power it i know let's take a black box and plug it in a plastic black box and that will be a good way to power it and i think that just takes away from this whole aesthetic that you've already created you add this black box what they could have done and should have done is not included this box and actually put the batteries inside the base so you wouldn't see them and then it would at least look like better. In fact, what would be actually super cool is if you had a little brass key that went on this base and then you could put it in here and wind it up and then let it go and the wings would flap for like 30 seconds or something and then stop and everyone could look at it and admire it because you're really not going to be having it going full time when you're having a party and people are over and there's this like in the background. That's just not going to happen. So it's going to be like something that's used for very short amounts of time. So a little wind up thing would be awesome or even cooler would be like a hand wheel that you could turn it and the wings would flap while you turn the thing. Then you could turn it forwards and backwards and you'd feel how it feels when the gears are turning and that would be super cool. So yeah, I would love to see it with a wind up mechanism, but at the very least with batteries that go inside so that it's not as jarring to see this plastic thing coming out of this brass and wood piece of art. Okay, so those are my thoughts. I was given this by Moyu Store. However, they're not paying me to make this video. This is all my own thoughts. And they could also get away with removing the mysterious aviator plaque on the front. Because what if you don't want yours to be called the mysterious aviator? Thanks for watching. See ya. Mysterious aviator. Would you like to do this as your job forever? <laughs> Well, I would like to do making things as my job, making mm -hmm. things like this. Yeah. Making things like out of pieces yeah. that are already made. <laughs> like, <laughs> Can you actually do that as a job? Ah, uh, yeah, it's called like an assembly line. <laughs> I would like to do that as my job. Yeah. <laughs> Be pretty great just so awkward. Yes. <laughs> right, I'll hold it Nothing with one hand and then is... like try plug this in with one hand. You really, once it's on, you don't even notice it's there. <laughs>